Hey guys, how's it going? Thanks for tuning in. Today we are looking at this 2024 CX90. Uh, customers complaining about a creaking noise from the suspension, uh, creaking, popping, whatever, you know. And uh, we are going to perform a bulletin uh, 02-02 slash no, that's 02-002 slash 24, yeah. Um, anyway, uh, we're gonna be putting some grease and stuff in the uh, lower control arm uh, bushings and uh, we're gonna put some covers on it to uh, protect that grease, keep that grease in there. And I'll show you exactly how we're gonna do that. Um, just to let you know, I've never done this before, so we'll see how it goes. So let's get going. Just take a look at this. So, yeah, this is uh, how it is, you know, South Central Texas. Um, you know, it doesn't, uh, we just uh, got, you know, got a cold front that came in. Yeah, a cold front. It's, it's 88 degrees in the shop right now. Um, but the wind is just blowing, you know, and this is what happens. So, um, you know, it doesn't rain here much that why that's why everything out there is all dead you know but um, then uh, you know the uh, cold front comes in and it rains it just sprinkles just a little bit and then the wind blows and all the dust comes and it just settles on every single thing like that so it's just it just makes everything look you know uglier than it is because everything's already dead so that's uh, the way fall goes you know in south central Texas 88 degrees cold front yeah so let's get into this. Okay, this is what we are looking at right here. This bushing right here. Now they tell you to take the engine undercover off. I, I don't know why it's, it's not in the way. This space right in between here on both sides, this one kind of goes up in there. That's where they want you to uh, put some grease. So some special grease going in there and then there's going to be a cover to cover this and we're going to do it on both sides. So, um, yeah, that's, that's what, um, that's what they want you to do. Now, this is, um, I would call it an internet browsing issue, you know? <laughs> so what I mean by internet browsing uh, is, um, uh, customers complaining about um, a creaking noise and I don't hear any creaking noise I don't hear any noise at all I can't hear any noise at all coming from it there's nothing but um, I, I, what I believe it happens and, and I think this happens a lot so you got to be careful you know getting on the forums and stuff like that um, people get on the internet they see somebody complaining about creaky noise, say, let's just say this creaky noise, and other people, oh yeah, I got that too. Oh yeah, me too, oh yeah, me too. And I got it and I went to the dealership and they did this bulletin and they fixed it, you know? And maybe that person actually had it. Maybe some of them had it, maybe some of them didn't. Maybe they all had it, who knows? But what happens is uh, people look at that and they're like, you know what, I bet you I have that. And then they hear some kind of noise, some little noise, that's it. That's the noise. We gotta, we gotta take it to the dealer. We gotta, gotta get this bulletin done. And um, it happens all the time. And people show up and they're like, I, I got this noise from this bulletin. And, and uh, I mean, you can tell, you know, right away, you know, if you can't duplicate it and they have the bulletin in their hand, they got a copy of it. Here, this bulletin, I need you to do it, you know? So uh, this one does not have any noise. And I talked to the customer and I, I'm gonna go ahead and do it yeah, anyway. You know and for peace of mind for the customer you know it's fine now I will tell you especially if you're a technician and uh, it doesn't matter if you're working for Mazda, Kia, Volkswagen, BMW, 
GM, Chrysler, Ford, well, it doesn't matter. Uh, every single manufacturer will tell you that unless you actually duplicate an issue, do not do a repair. And the purpose of that is because uh, it could be that, that, let's just say it's a sound that the customer's hearing. The customer's hearing a sound. It could be that that sound is normal. You don't hear it because you hear the normal sound, you know, and you don't figure that what the customer is complaining about is normal. But you're like, you know, I did have this noise one time and it was this one thing, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this repair, even though you didn't diagnose it or, or didn't duplicate it. Now you just open up a can of worms because the customer is going to come back if they were hearing a, this normal noise and they're going to say, hey, the noise is still there and you did a repair. So doing the repair is telling the customer, yes, there's an issue and we're fixing it. And uh, if it doesn't fix it because it's a normal issue, like I said, a can of worms and it could be bad. It could get really bad. But, you know, I talked to the customer. I told him I couldn't hear it. I couldn't. Um, duplicate the issue but I'm gonna do this repair just for peace of mind for the customer um, I think this uh, vehicle has about 26,000 miles on it and uh, I have the bulletin right here and we're gonna go over it uh, look at these tires so uh, if you can see them they the customer is already wanting to replace their tires and that's kind of weird they want the factory tires uh, let me show you um, these parts we got right here. Okay, here is here are the parts, and uh, I already kind of opened this up and, and held that up against there because it it is really hard going by this bulletin. It is really hard to understand what Mazda really wants you to do. Uh, just the instructions. Uh, it's always they make it more complicated than it really needs to be and I think a lot of that has to do with the translation from Japanese to English uh, I wouldn't say a lot of it but you know some of it definitely for sure so these are these are just rubber you know just uh, pieces of rubber and uh, this is this one goes through the top through that piece that we were looking at and it sits on there like that this one sits i think it sits underneath it it's supposed to line up like this and then you take these rivets and you stick these rivets through there hopefully you can see that and uh and just tack them on but uh of course uh, before we do that we need to put this special red rubber grease so I don't know what is this is it red oh yeah it is it's a dark red color so I am going to smear this stuff in there and um, I'll probably use I don't know a screwdriver or something stick it down in there uh, might think about using some of these acid brushes Maybe, I don't know, I don't need to brush it on, I just need to stick it in there. And, um, ooh, this, this stuff is smelly. But, um, they say to, that it's not necessary to um, clean the grease that's in it, so it has grease in there already. And uh, I kind of wiped some of this off the outside. I wiped it more on this side, but uh, getting up into that slot right there is going to be kind of tough so i'm just going to just shove it in there as much as i can uh they say you know it's no, not you don't have to clean it off just get it in there and put the covers on you know so that's what i'm going to do and uh we'll see we'll start on this side right here and I'll probably kind of clean this outside up so i can see if i can shove that stuff up under there and uh, well we'll get going on it okay so just kind of reading through this a little bit and uh, here's the part number just in case anybody's interested this part number of the cover dust cover and uh, I was wrong about it it's actually got uh, like 29,000 it's almost 30,000 miles not 26,000 uh, but still covered under warranty uh, this thing shows 
the inner part of those bushings and they're just showing you this is where you apply the grease yeah like it's gonna be that perfect you know it's not we're just gonna put some grease we're just gonna stick it in there and um, they uh, say wipe off you know excess grease in the non-contact surface uh, clean off grease from the edge of the bracket uh, no need to wipe off grease on the inside of course you're we're putting it in there on purpose uh, then this is kind of weird. It says apply grease to the other side of the front lower arm rear in the same procedure. So I don't know what they mean. The only thing I could think of is the rear part of this bushing on the other side. And I'm like, okay, well, that makes sense. If we have to get to that part, then we need to take the engine undercover off. But look, so I pulled this cover down right here and there's the bushing and there's there's no area that you can get to there's nothing this is this is solid solid rubber in here so I don't know what they mean and that's the same way with a lot of things that Mazda puts in here uh, is they explain it in a way that you can't understand what it is that they're talking about and I don't know what they mean, you know. Um, in this case, uh, they're showing these um, covers, and these are the uh, female rivet, male rivet, uh, three for each side. This shows how the thing slides on, slides on in here, uh, in one side, and you get to the slide in, and that shows it in position, right? And then it shows uh, you taking the other cover and sticking it on. You got these protruding out from the other side. And then there's like install the female and male rivets, three piece each, so that the male rivets are on the vehicle front. Push the rivets until they're seated completely, so that the male rivets are on the vehicle front. Install the female and male rivets three piece so that the male rivets are on the vehicle front. I mean, the only thing I can think of is that, that the male rivets are towards the front side going that way. Uh, I mean, it, uh, I don't know. It, uh, like I said, something's lost in translation. So that's the way I'm gonna do it. That's the way I'm gonna try to do it. I don't know if I can get these fem female rivets to sit on the back side of this while I stick the male rivets in. I would think it would be easier the other way, but we'll do it however we do it, however the thing sticks on, you know. And uh, then you just want to make sure, see, they're, they're actually showing here. So they're showing the male rivets going in this direction and the female rivets on this side. So, okay, at least we got the picture. Um, and then we want to look at these measurements right here and make sure that, you know, the thing's not too far out and I don't see how it can be too far out. There's not much, you know, not much room there for anything. We got uh, two A dust covers, two uh, B dust covers. We got six male rivets, six female rivets, uh, which includes one dust cover set, which is that part number right there. So let's get in here and let's start doing this. Okay, this is how I'm gonna do this. It ain't gonna be pretty. And this screwdriver won't even fit in there. It just does not fit in there at all. Just kind of work it in kind of the way they had us do on that steering campaign, I guess. You know, just kind of push it down in there, lather it in, slather it, lather it, whatever you want to call it. And I got to get this stuff in there. So I don't know how. You know, if I had something that I could put up in here and just squirt it in, that would work. That would work better. And the whole idea is uh, this, it, this is a rubber piece. This is a metal piece. And in some situations, it goes into a bump stop, I guess is what they called it, you know, where it would actually touch those pieces aren't supposed to touch i guess uh, why do they put them so close together why did they put that rubber in there you know um 
but they're touching and they're moving against each other and causing this creaking noise so and there is some grease in there already oh. and it says not to worry about taking any grease that's in there out just put the stuff in so i'm just shoving it in there hopefully it goes in all the way so this may take a while and on this other side here i can get the screwdriver in there a little bit better but it's got this piece in the way so i gotta kind of shove it from underneath am i doing this right i don't know um like i said i've never done this before i'm just gonna shove this stuff in there and we'll see what happens um like i said the customer you know they're complaining about it but i never heard any noise and they were fine with that they seemed fine as long as they got this done and that's where that you know online thing comes into place you know and it's just I, I understand people getting on forums they want to help each other you know or do they you know some, some some of my experiences it just seemed like somebody just wanted to be the person of knowledge be the hero i guess i don't know and it can get it can get nasty uh, I've seen things get really nasty on there. It's like, man, why are you talking to me so nasty? Like, I mean, I'm just trying to help this guy. You know, that's that's why I won't get on the forums anymore. I just won't do it. I just uh, don't want to be talked to like that. You know, and uh, I mean, you're not allowed to talk to people like that, but people do get away with it every once in a while. And I just, I don't know. Just trying to help someone and some big mouth's got to come along thinks they know everything and i don't know maybe they maybe they do so i'm gonna work with this a little bit and you see what i'm doing huh it's it's you know the same thing over and over you know it's just as fun now as it was you know a couple minutes ago so it's not getting any funner so uh, uh, I'll get this all lathered up and I'll bring you back. Okay, look at that. Look at this, how this thing is put on. So <laughs> this is the other side, all right? I, I went ahead and I did this side because, you know, I mean, how can I show you how to do something when I don't even know how to do it? You know, so I had to kind of figure this out. I think I may have figured something out. So let's finish this side so what i've been doing is <clears throat> putting this grease in here and i came to realize that you know i mean it ain't a barren right it's it's a bushing so we don't need to pack grease in there we just need to get grease into the thing so i did the right thing and i packed it in there and um, <laughs> so I even put some grease on the top in here. So eventually, you know, maybe it'll, it'll work its way down into the bushing if it needs to be. And I just, sh I shoved that screwdriver, I shoved it way up in there. And, you know, just realizing I just need to get grease in there, you know, it doesn't have to be packed. It just needs to be in there. So they tell you to wipe the excess of grease that's on the outside that's not needed in the area that it's not needed or something like that, you know. Some form or fashion of talking in which you can talk but not really understand what the heck's going on. And, uh, you know, that's the way their instructions are. And anyway, so they say to wipe this stuff away. So I'm gonna wipe it away. I may have figured out, cause it ain't easy to get these, these covers on. And, and the way that this thing sits, <laughs> I mean, you would think that they would put the cover a little bit better, 
but I mean, maybe it just doesn't make that, so maybe it's just not that big of a deal. I don't know. Like I said, my first time doing this. So, let's see. This is the top part. I should have probably pulled these out of the bag first, but you know, nah, I just. Okay, and this is going to fit around here. And at least the other side, it was easier to get it through once it had a little bit of grease in there. And they, uh, you can see it starting to come around right there, right? So this has to come all the way around and this piece around over here, right? But right there, I'm gonna stop because <clears throat> I can see the hole where that that um, tab, that pin thing goes through. So that was a hard part on the other side. So once I get these on, it's not too hard to put those those little um, tab things, or the male pin, the female pin, or whatever it is. So we got two on this side and one here. So this goes underneath. So I'm just gonna shove this underneath here. That's what I'm gonna try anyway so that I can get this in. Because on the other side, I couldn't get this pin. It's way up in there. It's just impossible. So let me see if I can get this in here. Where's the, hello, where is it? Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, so it's a rivet, that's what they call it. So this is the male rivet, and that is the female rivet. If you're wondering why I got uh, electrical tape on my thumbs, that's, you know, it's coming in style. I thought I'd start a new fashion. Now, I actually, um, <laughs> I um, cut my thumbs to the bone, both of them. Uh, one I did on Sunday, the other one I did on Monday. I don't know, it's just, uh, just a thing, you know? And I don't usually worry too much about band-aids, stuff like that, but they were bad. They were all the way to the bone. <clears throat> and just putting electrical tape just keeps the band-aid from getting all nasty. So it actually helps. Uh, okay, so how can I get this in there? Okay, so it's in his spot. <laughs> It's not right, this is not how they tell you to do it, but I just couldn't get it on the other side. So pop that on there so that one is in. So hopefully you can see that now. Twist this around. Oh, so I can figure my light out so that it actually stays on long enough. Come on, twist around, twist around. So this piece is not wanting to come down. If I can grab it. Well, there it is. Okay, so there's the inner piece. That's gonna slide underneath there. The outer one, which has grease all over it now. Oh, this is fine, that's fine. Uh, <laughs> it's supposed to slide inside this underneath that yeah so it's hard to tell now because of all the grease on it this is special red rubber grease special stuff they don't they don't give you a part number for it or anything like that they just show a picture of it and they're like you know, get locally. Well, nobody locally has this stuff. I actually had to get it off of Amazon, which for us is a big ordeal because, um, you know, it's not like somebody from the corporate office comes down and says, hey, here's a credit card. If you wanna order something on Amazon, go ahead. You know, they don't, they don't do that. I don't know why they don't. What's the problem? So then it's a big ordeal. You know, our parts department, they don't wanna order it. Like, I'm not using my credit card. 
you know so it's back and forth and back and forth and meanwhile you know the customers thinking well, am i ever going to get this done and you know <laughs> so yeah big ordeal so but we got it and then they were trying to substitute silicone grease stuff like that and i'm like oh, i don't know they Oops, I just dropped that rivet. I'm like, you know, I don't, I don't know. The Mazda does not say silicone. They say use this stuff, you know. So that's the stuff we need to use. I'm not going to use anything else because, you know, I put some kind of grease in there that's going to deteriorate this bushing, you know. Then it's my fault, right? It's not the parts department's fault because they gave me the wrong grease. I can blame them, but nobody's going to listen. They don't care. Okay, I got that one in. Let's go one more. I know, it looks kind of like a mess. But everything does from time to time. You know, you got to make a mess before you can fix something. Isn't that the way it goes? Make a mess before you can clean up. I mean, that's true. Why clean up if there's no mess? Uh, okay, that popped in. So, there we go. In place. Okay. Now let me clean it. Get a rag that doesn't have grease all over it. Because everything does now. All the rags got grease on them now. And so, you know, I packed that stuff in there and I was just thinking, it's like, um, I hope that that's not a bad thing because, I mean, can you imagine the customer coming back? I got this red grease dripping on my floor of my garage. Oh God, yeah, that would just be my luck. <laughs> I just tried to make it really good for you, lady, but you know, <laughs> okay I, it looks good you know and so i misread the thing i thought it said you know can't be more than 3.5 millimeters no it said three to five millimeters i mean i'll just use this this is a five millimeter i don't know if you can read that a five millimeter thick right so you know it's it's good i don't know what they expect you to do it's all the way down you know and the one on the other side, let's see if I can get this light working again. So the one on the other side, it kind of comes out a little bit, you know? I mean, what can you do about it? That's the bushing right there. That's the way it is. It's, it stops right there. So, I mean, if they want to close more than that, you know, glue it shut. I don't know. Put some little tabs that hold the thing on. I don't know. Um, <laughs> But uh, that's, that's pretty much it. Uh, they're both done. Got the bulletin in and we will see. We will see what happens. I'll let the customer go. I never heard a noise to begin with. Uh, and uh, I'm sure everything's fine. Uh, this customer's uh, wanted to replace the tires, you know, and I know I showed you this is a wear bar. You know, that wear bar right there is 3.30 seconds, right? From, from deep inside there, from deep inside right here to right there, that's 3.30 seconds. And uh, supposedly, and I don't know, you know what it might be, what the law is in your area. Here in Texas, at 3.30 seconds, uh, you need to replace your tires or it will not pass state inspection. So um, that wear bar, when this becomes a complete line straight across then you know you're at 330 seconds so you got to replace your tires uh, customers are going to replace the tires anyway they're going to put the same tires that came on it you know they're uh falcon um falcon tires you know uh they're 20 275 45 r 21s uh the falcon uh ZX, ZX, CT, 6 AS, you know, anyway, 
got those tires ordered for the customer they'll probably be in tomorrow and I will put those in um, kind of a short video guys and uh, uh, sorry about that wish I had more I could show you so there it is the CX-90 what do you want to see what do you want me to show you what do you want me to do you know I'm gonna take the gas tank out? yeah gas tank what about the battery uh, just let me know run around down in the comments you know what should I do what, what, let's look under oh look I forgot to put this back so let me put that back on that's all dangling down and stuff you know uh yeah whenever uh i put these things on a lift i gotta run it up above you know where my tire usually goes so the tire's in here so i ain't got a lot of room to walk around right here when the thing's on the ground but uh that's the way these are they're so long they just i don't know it seems so long. It's a long, long. It's I would I would consider it a full size SUV. You know what? What do you think? You know you think it's a full size SUV? I think so. There's a lot of room in this vehicle. So, and I mean they're nice. It's a smooth, smooth running vehicle. When it's running, I mean it's smooth. I don't know why. I mean I, I wouldn't buy one myself just because I have no need for one. You know, but when I see one out on the streets, I smile. Yeah, there's one, there's the CX-90. So, run on down in the comments, let me know. Let me know what you think. What do you wanna see next? Um, as you know, uh, I am uh, stuck with whatever comes in the front door, but um, I'll, you know, uh, entertain in, in, in whatever fashion that I can make possible. You know, uh, if you want me to do a review of something, uh, I, I don't know, a review of a vehicle, you know, hook up a, you can get a CX-70, CX-90, CX-50, put them all in a row, and let's just look at them, okay? Uh, just let me know. Um, I'll try and get that done. Uh, so, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate the heck out of each and every one of you, and I will see you in the next one.